this is Alex Holcomb with Applied Information Sciences. And what I want to show you here is how you can use a custom field control to display information contained within a secondary list. And this is part of my creation of a custom relationship field using Microsoft Office SharePoint Server 2007. So I'm still in the process of trying to create a field which will help me define and manage relationships between documents. And in the previous two examples, uh, I've created several things. Uh, one is the ability to define the type of relationship, and I'm using this relationship type lookup list, uh, and it has two items for rendition and copy. And this is where I can manage the types of relationships that I want to create. Um, I've also created a custom field and field control. Uh, if we come into edit one of these, we'll see this relationship field has a dropdown, which is pulling from that relationship type lookup list as well as uh, this control here, which is the asset URL selector. And that provides us a UI for going through and selecting the document that is the uh, part of this relationship. Okay. Uh, and then when I click OK here, this relationship information, the type of relationship and the information about the corresponding document uh, will get stored in this relationship lookup list. That re stores relationship type. Uh, as well as the GUIDs for the items and lists that are a part of this relationship. So I don't want to list one. Uh, in the previous example, that would be the GUID of the uh, both the, uh, the the item that we are modifying and the list that that document's contained in. Uh, item two and list two; those are the GUIDs for the item, uh, the document list item that we selected, as well as the list that that uh, document resides in. Now, you'll notice I'm not displaying anything in this relationship field. Right? I'm not storing any value in there. All the values for the relationship are being stored in that relationship lookup list. But what I do want to do is display that information uh, when I go and click on the uh, view properties for one of these documents. And the way I'm going to do that is go back to my relationship field control. And I've added a render method here. And that's gonna, I'm going to use that to display all of the relationship information uh, for that particular document. So when this field control gets rendered, we check to see which mode it's in. And I want to display this information when I'm going to view the properties of this. So I look for display mode. And if we're in display mode, then I create a camel query that's going to query that relationship lookup list. And again, that's the list I'm using to store all of this relationship information. Uh, I'm going to execute a query against that list to look for uh, the GUID of the current item either in the item one field or item two field. So I construct that query, um, I execute it, and it's going to bring me back a, a list item collection. Uh, so now I iterate through that collection, and I want to get the information for the corresponding document, right? Not the current one, but the, the, the document that's the other part of the relationship. So what I want to do is first get the relationship type. I want to get that value and information, so I do look up um, to see what the value is for the relationship type field. Uh, the second step is to get the information for the corresponding document. So I look to see, uh, did we match list item one with the current item? And if that's the case, then we use item two, right? If item two matches, then we use item one. But regardless, we get the uh, information for the related item and not the current item, okay? So then we use that related information to get the list. And again, we're using the GUIDs here and not any kind of name or title. Uh, we get the related list and the related list item. And the way I want to display the information for this related item is I want to display the name of the document. And then next to that, in parentheses, I want to display the relationship type. And I want that whole thing to be a hyperlink, which will take me to the display form for that related uh, document. And so I take the information from the list, from the related list, the related item, and I start to construct what that URL is going to look like. Okay. Uh, and the final piece of this is taking this information and uh, outputting uh, that information as a, a, a hyperlink. Okay. So I construct that and uh, do an output dot right line to 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 spit that out. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, build this and deploy it. So if we go in and look at the properties now for this, 
we'll see that the relationship field is being populated with all of the relationships that it's a part of. Okay, so we can see that uh, this document is a rendition of the text document. Right? And if I click, click on the link for this, then we'll see that the text document is a rendition of the Word document. Okay. Now, again, I'm not storing any values inside of this relationship field. Rather, I'm storing them all in the secondary list, and I'm using my field control here to go and query that list and, and, and uh, display the related information. Uh, the benefit of doing it that way is I don't have to go and update all of the corresponding documents when the relationship is created. Right? One of the drawbacks to doing it that way, though, is that uh, because I'm not populating anything in this field, uh, I can't search against it. So if I want to search for specific relationships, uh, I won't be able to search against this field to do that. Now, this is just a simple example. Uh, you can certainly extend this if you wanted to so that when you come into edit, uh, it shows you all of the existing relationships that have been created, and then you can add functionality to go in uh, and, and modify the existing ones or delete the existing ones if you wanted. Uh, one thing to note here also is I'm persisting these values, all the relationship values, in the uh, onload method, right, after we're doing a post back. And we did this in one of the earlier examples. Uh, so when the page gets posted back, we go through and we stick all the values inside of that corresponding list. Uh, that may or may not be how you want to do it. Uh, one issue you might want to look out for is if there's another control on the page that also does a post back. Uh, you want to make sure that that it's the proper post back that, that is occurring that's from that OK button uh, on the form uh, to make sure that uh, that's when you want to store the values. Uh, another way to handle that is instead of doing it on the post back is storing all of this uh, relationship information in that relationship field temporarily so that it gets picked up in an event handler and the event handler can read all those values and it would store those values in the relationship field. Right, and then clear the field out. So again, the relationship field doesn't have any any value itself, but rather it's all stored in that relationship um, list. Now, there's been three steps to this, right? So we've created a, a, a custom field and control. We've used the asset URL selector uh, to select the corresponding uh, document in the relationship. Uh, we're using a relationship type lookup list to define the type of relationship that we can use. Uh, and we're storing all of this relationship information in a secondary relationship lookup list. Uh, and then we're displaying all of those relationships inside the field control. So your implementation may be a little bit different, but I hope this has given you some ideas on how you can extend uh, these custom fields and use SharePoint lists uh, in your logic, as well as some of the existing controls like the asset URL selector uh, when you're doing some of your own customizations and coding against SharePoint.